In 2001, Zufa LLC purchased the UFC from Semaphore Entertainment, transforming it from a toxic brand into one of the most dominant entities in a world sport. But things may have been different had they invested in an upstart promotion based just a few miles away. Today, we look at a promotion that attempted to usurp the UFC at its lowest ebb, but found star names and a flashy locale weren't enough for long-term success. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of the World Fighting Alliance. The WFA was the brainchild of jiu-jitsu black belt John Lewis. Lewis is considered one of the unsung heroes of BJJ, becoming only the fourth American to earn a jiu-jitsu black belt and was responsible for bringing the fabled Novo Yao to the US for the first time. Lewis's exploits even saw him earn a call to the UFC, only to suffer one of the fastest knockouts in company history against Jens Pulver at UFC 28. Lewis turned his attention to coaching full-time shortly after amassing a portfolio of high-profile clients, including many of the rich and famous from Las Vegas' night scene. When the Nevada State Athletic Commission announced plans to legalize MMA, Lewis became interested in forming his own promotion and began contacting his clientele to gauge interest in funding the project. Among the most interested parties were casino owners Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta, who along with their best friend Dana White, had become enamored with the sport through Lewis's teachings. At the last minute, the Fertitas turned their attentions to the failing UFC, purchasing the company for $4 million in January 2001 and holding its first event just a few months later. Lewis, meanwhile, found investment in nightclub owner John Huntington and defense attorney Louis Palazzo and began planning an ambitious promotion mixing MMA with the glitz and glamour of its Las Vegas locale, with dancers, DJs, and rap performances taking place around the fights, a concept Lewis described as Nightclub meets Fight Club. The WFA held its first event on November the 3rd, 2001, at the Joint Theater in Las Vegas. With Las Vegas emerging as the sports hotbed, the WFA attracted a strong mix of veterans and prospects for its inaugural card, which saw future UFC champion Rich Franklin beating Marvin Eastman in the main event. The promotion returned for its Level 2 event eight months later boasting much improved production values and an undercard including Kimo Leopoldo and welterweight prospect Frank Trigg. Even a pre-exclusive Bruce Buffer was on hand as the master of ceremonies. It's time to begin the World Fighting Alliance Championship! The card would be a mixed blessing for the WFA. While every fight on the show ended by stoppage, including a first round KO for Trigg, the show was marred by the significant number of injuries sustained by the fighters, the most notable coming in the main event, where Jermaine Andre's match with Joey Villaseñor ended in just 21 seconds in rather brutal fashion. When he comes up, he just picked up, and he comes down, and he puts his leg down, and bland. At this point, ah. you're just hoping that you land squarely. Despite the setbacks, the company pressed ahead with level three, intended to be the first step towards legitimizing itself as a formal promotion. While Marvin Eastman claimed the light heavyweight title with a first round stoppage of Alex Stiebling, the main event was again tainted, as Dennis Hallman suffered a low blow at the hands of Frank Trigg that was ruled a legal shot by referee Larry Landless. Hallman was rendered unable to continue, leaving Trigg to win the welterweight title in the worst of circumstances. The biggest damage to WFA, however, was self-inflicted. Prior to the two title fights, several credentialed photographers were ejected by event organizers, with several journalists covering the car choosing to end their coverage in an act of solidarity. The scandal placed a black mark upon the upstart promotion, with many MMA outlets vowing to never cover future WFA events. A planned Level 4 card in 2003 was dropped, and Lewis and Huntington sold their stake in the company to Palazzo, with many assuming the promotion to be defunct. Fast forward three years and MMA was booming following the success of The Ultimate Fighter and Palazzo along with Las Vegas lawyer Ross Goodman revived the WFA to capitalize on the upswing. WFA began an ambitious raid of several of the sport's biggest free agents including Quentin Rampage Jackson and Fleoto Machida. The company even made an attempt to sign MMA legend Tito Ortiz only for the fighter to change his mind last minute and renew his contract with the UFC. The biggest signing, however, was Boss Rutten. The Dutchman was considered one of the greatest fighters of MMA's early years, amassing a 21-fight winning streak in both Pancrase and the UFC. But he had not competed in MMA since his controversial title win over Kevin Randleman. 
Bruton had been set to face Kimo Leopoldo, but after the Hawaiian failed a pre-fight drug test, the call went to the King of Cage veteran Ruben Warpath Villarreal. With star signings and an aggressive marketing campaign, WFA intended to host the biggest independent MMA show ever seen in North America and establish the company as legitimate contenders to the UFC. WFA made its return on July 22, 2006 with King of the Streets, taking place at the Inglewood Forum in California. Boxing commentator Barry Tompkins headed a star-studded broadcasting team, which included Steven Quadros, pro wrestling legend Bill Goldberg, and... Redacted. For all its fanfare, the card played out relatively straightforward, a case of the fighters proving the star attraction rather than the matches themselves. Highlights included a submission win for Jason Mayhem Miller and Martin Katman's first round win over Edwin Aguilar, a performance that earned the Dane a call from the UFC just four weeks later. Most of the fans' attention was on the co-main event, where just over seven years after his last fight, Boss Rutten made his long-awaited return to the cage. Among Rutten's corner for the fight was actor Kevin James, a close friend of Rutten who later cast the fighter in his 2012 comedy, Here Comes the Boom. Rutten wasted no time landing overhands on the outmatched warpath before hammering the Californian with his trademark leg kicks. It led to an inevitable result midway through the first round. One more leg it's only kick one or two kicks. Rutten's return to action was a successful, albeit tainted one, as the fighter failed a post-fight drug test for several prescription painkillers and granted a six-month suspension. Although his win was upheld by the California State Athletic Commission, Rutten hasn't fought since in MMA. Rampage Jackson would claim the night's final honors with a split decision over Matt Lindland, a match the former Olympian later described as the bitterest defeat of his career. Bitter losses would be a theme of the WFA, as despite heavy promotion and backing from TV producer Showtime, the card pulled just under 50,000 buys, a huge blow for Palazzo and Goodman, who self-funded the majority of the event. WFA announced plans for a second show later that year, but the cracks had already started to form behind the scenes. In November of 06, company CEO Jeremy Lappin sued Palazzo and Goodman for breach of contract, claiming he had not been paid since June 2006 a few weeks before King of the Streets. Palazzo and Goodman were quick to cut their losses, and the following month sold the WFA to the UFC's parent company Zufa, including the contracts of all its fighters. The WFA would find a new generation of fans in the digital world, as it served as the regional promotion in the career mode of the UFC video game. Goodman too would retain a loose connection to the sport, serving as the defense attorney of several UFC fighters against the Nevada State Athletic Commission, including Vanderlei Silva, Cheryl Sonnen, and Nick Diaz. The WFA was always going to be a tough sell. While the company boasted top talent and high production values for the time, the nightclub setting gave the promotion a seedy undertone compared to the UFC, while its 2006 revival seemed doomed from the very start. John Lewis had originally pitched the WFA as nightclub meets fight club, but in the end, it was more comparable to Bender from Futurama. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go build my own theme park with blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the park. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss the video.